Hi, and welcome to Paper Root Scrapbooking. I'm Nadine, and today we're going to keep talking about what to do with all the leftover supplies from your class kits. And today I'm going to be showing you what I plan to do with this class kit from a class by Jess Forrester called Life by the Numbers at the Crop and Create Delivered of November 2020. <laughs> Alright, so let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about this class kit by Jess Forrester and she did a class that was very um, journaling heavy and used numbers as journaling prompts which was quite interesting. So here we have primarily the um, Sweet Story uh, collection from Crate Paper. Um, it all this kit also included the day-to-day -day planner stickers uh, by Pebbles, I think. Oh no, this is also crepe paper, and a couple of thicker sets. So I think this one went with the collection, and this one was from something else. And then it had this bold black pattern that was actually a, I think Halloween paper. So this is what we made with the class. We made a layout that was supposed to be about ourselves. Um, and I took on that challenge. I did a, my back to school first day of class is selfie. And I just wrote a little bit about how my life is changing. So there's that layout. And then she, the other, she's a very strong pocket page scrapbooker. So she also did this scrapbooking and used numbers as our prompts. So, um, three, like here's the number three. I usually have about three cups of tea in a day, sometimes more, sometimes less. I love the warmth and comfort it brings to my day, especially in the morning. So just like a bunch, you know, starting your prompt with a number. Okay, so that was what this class was all about. So this one was about my age. This is life at 44. And then this one was about um, just random numbers and how how you can start your journaling using a number. Okay, so there's those finished projects. And this is what I have left over. So I still have quite a bit of the um, glossy puffy stickers. And I still have a lot of the puffy alphas as well. Planner stickers, as you know, come with like so many stickers. So I still have lots of that. I still have this whole sheet of 12 by 12 chipboard. There's only like a few pieces missing out of here. So there's like quite a bit of this left as well. But I don't have even one single sheet of 12 by 12 paper. So I could, if I wanted to, just pull out a sheet of white cardstock and make a layout. And I am going to pull out a sheet of white cardstock, but I'm going to show you a little bit of a different way of going about it. So here is my 12 by 12. And what I'm going to do is make a Frankenstein page. Now I learned this technique from the Bash Your Scrapbook Stash Facebook group. So B-Y-S-S -S Facebook group. And I will link that in the video description below if you're interested. And they have like a whole if you go into the guides they I think that's where it is it has like a whole section of different ways that people have done this but this is how I do it so I'm just gonna cut off the branding strips from these two sheets of paper that still have a 12 inch length and I'm going to basically Frankenstein them together so Frankenstein was a monster built by a scientist and he was just like randomly put together. So I want these two sides to be, oops, I'm gonna move this. I want these two sides of the paper to be um, what shows up on my page. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to cut about, because I have about this much left on the background so I'm going to cut about two inches off of the pink so that I can use it in a different way 
It has this beautiful blue floral on the back. So I'm just going to take two inches off of that. With my scraps. And then I'm going to line, sorry, I'm going to line this up onto my white 12 by 12 cardstock. And I'm going to run a strip of um, adhesive down the one side. And then I'm going to flip this one and I'm going to run a piece, a, sorry, a piece, a strip of adhesive down this side. And then I'm going to line up this. This is all lined up here. I'm going to line up this corner with the other side of the paper. moved on me, of course. And so like just if you use like this ATG is like temporarily repositionable, right? So I'm not too worried about it sticking down a little. And there we go. And it often doesn't like come out perfectly. Like this one is a little um, jagged so I'm just gonna pull it off try it again and if I can't get it right I'm just gonna cut it because <laughs> I don't like to fidget with that kind of stuff for too long I get impatient keep it there. Um, and I've seen it done a whole bunch of different ways some people use like a Tim Holtz glass mat that has the measurement or one of those, um, what's that called, scrap easel. Uh, Close to my heart has a mat that has a 12 by 12 measurement on it. Um, you can get other kinds of measurements. So anyways, now I have a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. I just wanted to show a way to do it that anybody could do even if you don't have one of those measuring mats. So I just use a simple sheet of white cardstock as my measuring piece. And on the back, this is what it looks like, which is a whole lot of floral, not really my jam, but I do love these two colors together. So I'm gonna use this Frankenstein, and I will almost always use a strip of something to cover up that join on the page, just because I don't like the look of it, but other people are fine with it. So I'll probably do something like that. Now there, this has been like a, popular kind of layout lately this half and half and I think it might have something to do with Shamel Lane put out a class that was a half and half class so anyways I don't know I didn't take that class but <laughs> surprising right because I have like a small class addiction anyways I'm going to use this Frankenstein um, paper to scrapbook these two pictures of my little beauty queen here and I will come back and show you what I made and what I'm going to do with the rest of the things. Okay, so this is um, the layout that I made with the Frankenstein together background piece. Um, I just need to get some, I need to look up the date and get a little bit of journaling on there and I need some wet glue on some of my chipboard pieces. But otherwise, this is going to be it. And I just wanted to pop back in and um, show you that I still had like a pretty significant number of scraps left. And so I'm gonna show you a different way that I'm gonna Frankenstein this page together um, by wallpapering. So this is not an actual sheet of cardstock. This is like a really flimsy, um, I don't know what you call them, but they're like inserts in the um, page protectors that you buy. They will quite often have something like this inside. And so I keep them and I use them for stuff like this. Sometimes I use them for photo matting. Sometimes I use them for this wallpapering technique. Um, I use them for a variety of different things. So this is one of the ways that instead of, um, you know, going through and just splicing a few pieces of papers together, I didn't feel like if I overlapped these, they would actually make up a 12 by 12, and I don't think they do. But if I put them on 
top of this and now I had to cut this down so make sure if you do save these and use them to check them because they don't always come 12 by 12 so this one I had to cut a little bit off so I just under a quarter of an inch I took off so I'm going to show you another little trick so this is not a 12 by 12 piece but I wanted this to be the bottom and this to be the top and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece that has the black on the edge and it kind of lines up with that and I'm going to glue that down first on, on the far side so it's going to go here Okay. Now because these are stripes, um, I can put these together and you can't really tell or overlap them and you can't really tell that they are not all one long strip of paper. So what I'm going to do is put the glue on here and I'm going to overlap it a bit so that it's the same like the lines add up. And then I'm just going to take that off. Put that with my little bitty scraps over here. And then I have this strip of pink, or I could use the blue side, but I think I'm going to go with the pink. So it's easier, of course, if you have full 12 inch strips of paper, but you don't have to. You can wallpaper in any size that you have. And then just don't be worried about things um, overlapping or like if you don't have that full strip, make sure to look for things that you can join up like that. That doesn't, it's not visible right so I'm just gonna put these two on here I haven't even like gone and looked for pictures for this but I'm assuming I'll just use some more of my little princess because she's so adorable and I have lots of pictures of her um, already printed so we will do it that way and now this side because I started on this side every time this side is a little bit uneven so I'm just gonna take my trimmer And I'm just going to cut a sliver off of that side and toss it out, all those little bits and pieces. And if you use the same color of ink along the edges of your paper, so in this case I used black soot distress ink, it just kind of ties them all together and makes look like they belong that way. And so I'll just do that again on this side even though I had already kind of inked them. There we go. And so now I have a full 12 by 12 plan for a layout. So I am going to go and um, turn off the camera for a bit and go find some pictures and get some things on here. And I will be back to show you both of my completed layouts with journaling and dates. Okay, so here are the layouts that I created with the Frankenstein method um, to finish up my class kit um, from Just Forrester Life by Numbers um, from Crop and Create 2020. Uh, so here is the first layout I did um, where I just um, glued the two longer pieces of paper together to make a 12 by 12 and then covered up the seam with some other patterned paper strips. I added a title using the alphas that were in the kit as well as the chipboard word suite. Um, what else did I do? I also added the, a couple of other chipboard pieces. 
I used the planner stickers um, to, do, to put Remember Today here where I was going to put my date and I got some gold hearts on there from the planner stickers. These stars are from the chipboard sheet. I added some journaling and I punched some hearts from a small scrap of um, this yellow paper on the back has this pink floral with some puppies on it. So I just carefully chose spots that didn't have the dog on it because there wasn't enough room on the any of the dogs to make that look cute, but I thought the pink floral would go good. So there's that. And oh, and I border punched this strip of yellow that I had kicking around. Um, and then this one, we did it a little bit differently. We still Frankensteined it together, but we did it using um, an insert from a page protector and cutting it down to 12 by 12 and then wallpapering it. So we still Frankensteined a piece of paper together. We didn't use a full sheet of cardstock or a full sheet of patterned paper. We just Frankensteined together the pieces that were left in the kit. Um, and I added a couple things after I turned off the camera in terms of paper. So I took the border strips from this collection and none of them were the full length of a 12 by 12. So I just cut them up and I staggered them onto this bottom piece down here just for a little bit of interest and to soften up the bold, bold black because this is a lot of the black, right? And then I also took this, this was all one sheet, um, and I punched down both sides with a one inch circle punch. So just this old Creative Memories circle punch. Punched down both sides. Uh, sorry about the shadows. It's so dark here already. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon. Anyway, um, and then I also punched some half circles and then cut them to size. So I just measured them up. So then I punched a circle. Let's see if I can show you. Um, to make this scallop border, I would punch a circle and then I line it up on my trimmer. And actually, if you um, just settle it in the groove there, it measures like a half inch on this side and a half inch on this side. And then just slice it down the middle. And that's how I made those little scalloped pieces. Yeah. Okay, so I did that and then with the ones that were not quite full, so like you can see I like half punched a circle, I just took some of the ones I used on my trimmer, measured them up into the circle and then used my scissors to trim off the excess. And that gave me, just this tiny piece of paper, gave me enough uh, half, half circles, I guess, to make this yellow scalloped border across. So that's how I did that. That's another good way to use up some scraps is to get those punches out. So this is what I have left. So that's that small piece of paper still left me with like a few circles, right? And then I just ran um, my ATG across and then added all the half circles on and it looks like a cute little scallop punch, but I don't have a punch that big. I wish I did, but I don't. And also it was, a good way to use up like an odd shaped piece of paper, right? So there's that. Then I used the two title or two alphas to make my title. I brought in a smaller alpha as well um, just because I didn't have room to do the whole thing in the two alphas that I had uh, to put it into this space that I wanted. Um, this is a chipboard piece, chipboard, chipboard. And then these little gold hearts are again from the planner stickers. And then I added some journaling and a date stamp. And voila, we have a layout. So, so far we have done um, three class kits that we used up. So the first one, we just used all the scraps. So we had two full sheets of 12 by 12 paper and we pulled a piece of cardstock and we made three layouts using all the scraps with some techniques like layering and um, building a background with paper 
um, border strips um, and what was oh and making banners out of the smaller strips of paper so we did banners backgrounds out of border strips and layering of all the scraps this one we did some Frankenstein layouts where we built 12 by 12 pages out of scraps and then in the other the second one we did some cards so that's all I have for you for today so this is oh and we were going to talk about what's left okay so that's it for my layouts but this is the scraps that I have left so those are just going in my recycle bin because I don't need to keep little stuff like that I have these two little border strip bits that say boo from this uh, paper the striped paper and I'm just going to recycle that because it's too tiny to hang on to I try not to keep anything bigger than a if it's not big enough to make a three by four pocket card then I try to toss it out unless I have a specific use for it so these alphas are going into my thickers box which p.s. is getting a little bit too full so I still have a couple of these on this one um, I think I'm all out of S's though. Oh, I have one more. Oh no, I have S's on this one. Maybe it's is it this one. You are S. Yes, the S's are missing on this one. And I have a couple of E's, A's, I's, and O's. So I should still be able to make some decent words with that. Here we have A's, E's, I's, only one O and some use so I should be able to make still some words from that so these are going to go in my stickers box which by the way is getting a little bit too full and I might need to find a alternate location for some of my thickers until further notice I'm sorry about the glare um so that's going in my thickers box then this um these planner stickers there is like so many cute little like I love these cameras um, and I was surprised to be able to use some of these because they're very planner based like remember to do important but I feel like I could use some of that these little banners are very useful I'm not sure about the numbers but the heart the gold hearts are super cute I think I've used like all the gold hearts from here all the gold hearts from here but there's still some further back in the booklet um, I like these gold word strips too and the banners again and then some word strips but again I don't know if I can use a lot of those word strips just because they say like to do but I might be able to use them for the and lots of numbers like date numbers anyways we'll try to use some of that up by popping it into my traveler's notebook project kit so that's where this is gonna go I think the colors go pretty well as well as like the size is nice and small so we're gonna try that if I feel like they're not getting used in there maybe I'll get rid of them so I can't think of another use for them and then this big there's still quite a bit of chipboard left on this um on this chipboard sheet so we have used up quite a few more than what was used up before but there's still so much on there so I'm just gonna pop that into this little box of little girl stuff that I have that's where that's gonna go and I think that's it for that class kit it is all used up and the leftover embellishments and alphas are put away so Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click that like button to give me a thumbs up. Hit the show more button under the video description if you'd like to find links to some of the things that we talked about today. And if you have a question or comment, just leave it down below and I will get back to you just as soon as I can. If you would like to see more of my videos, it would make my day to have you as a subscriber. So just click that, that subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when a new video goes up. Have a great day, everyone.